So we're going to start out with some basic identities in 10.3. We're going to look at function properties first. And a really, really fast view of overview of functions. This is all pre-calculus one material, but they go from their domain to the room, what? And what the function f does, it takes things from the domain and sends them to things in the range. So that is what a function does. And we're gonna look at is exactly what is in the domain of our six trig functions and what is in the range. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started here. Uh, we'll go cosine first. So what angles does it make sense to take a cosine of? Well, <clears throat> if you think about any point in the unit circle, no matter where it is, you're gonna have an x value. So no matter where you are, cosine uh, will have uh, a value. So cosine, let's lay this out a little bit better. Let's build a table here. Function. We'll go over this in a little more detail when we get to the uh, graphing section. So we got cos theta, domain. Theta can be anywhere between negative infinity to positive infinity. So I could write any theta in, and I'm going to use this symbol right here. So what in the world does this mean? write down some notation for a minute. So if I translate this into English, this symbol right here means in, and of course this is the real numbers. So this says theta is in the real numbers. So whatever theta is could be any real number. Now, another way to write all real numbers is interval notation. And we'll get a little more into interval notation. Uh, but this, this is interval notation. Uh, parentheses means open, so do not include the endpoints. Uh, what are infinity and negative infinity? Well, if I actually draw the number line, Infinity, negative infinity are what's at the end of the number line. I should probably write them more like this. So you can think of them as the endpoints. Uh, they're not actually numbers because if infinity was a number, you could just add one more and then you'd have a number bigger than infinity. So infinity is the thing that's bigger than all the numbers. And negative infinity likewise is the thing that's smaller or more negative than all the negative numbers. Uh, we don't have very good concepts of infinity and negative infinity as humans, um, because if you think um, just about if this was time, we a lot of times think in, in terms of time, uh, everything that we do is on a very small interval. So we can't really um, think about infinity very well. Somebody says, Maybe on this date, they say, I'm gonna love you forever. What does that mean? Well, if you're lucky, maybe 40 or 50 years. Um, so when we say things like forever, we're really talking about an interval of time that's probably not exceeding 60 years if we're talking about human interaction. Um, you know, if you're a geologist, you might be talking about millions or billions of years, but either way, you're not getting close to infinity or negative infinity, even on a geologic or uh, astronomical, if you're doing astronomy, uh, you have things way bigger than a million billion, but again, still not hitting infinity. All right, so these are very difficult things for our brain to think of, so it's best to just think about them as what's 
sort of bordering what's on the borders of the real number line. If you go outside the real number line, these are the actual boundaries. All right, so there we go. They're not actually numbers, so that's why we do not include them. If we wanted to include those, we would use square brackets. All right, so domain, we're gonna shortcut this and just write an interval notation. All right, range, this is outputs. What's the biggest output and the smallest output? Cosine picks x values, so let me write on this. There's the smallest x value, there's the biggest x value. And what are these? One and negative one. You can hit one and negative one, so I'm going to use closed brackets here. So our range is negative one to one. That's cosine. Sine, really similar. Any point in the unit circle has a y uh, coordinate, no matter what. So there's no bad angle. After this, all the rest of the trig functions have plenty of bad angles, and we'll look at those carefully. Range, same thing, except here is the smallest y value, here is the biggest y value, and there, of course, biggest y value is one, smallest y value is negative one. So it's a little strange, it's got the same exact domain and range as the cosine function. We'll go to tangent, let me write x, y, y over x. So a, before we wrote, uh, this is going to be defined when x is not 0. So now we need to figure out when is x 0. So what we're going to do is basically force x to be 0. Where does that put us on the unit circle? There's two places that x is 0. It's going to happen right here. All right, and pi over 2, if I go this way, 3 pi over 2. Uh, we have a problem because uh, if I keep going, I'll have 5 pi over 2. And if I keep going, 7 pi over 2, uh, some more, 9 pi over 2. 11 pi over 2, 13, 15, 17, 19, etc., etc., etc. So let's undo a little bit here, clean this up, get all this blue stuff off. And what I'm going to do is write every name for the top angle, every name for the bottom angle, all at one time. So the top angle, just think of pi over 2 plus as many rotations as you want. Oops. So the top angle is going to be pi over 2 plus, how do I write as many rotations as I want? Well, here's a rotation, one full rotation, and I'm going to use the letter K. Now, I can't let K be a fraction. It's got to be a whole number. So I'm going to use this funky notation this z right here, this is all the integers. And another nice way to write the integers. This is, uh, I call this curly bracket notation. When you use this, you're describing a set of values where you're basically going to write every single value in here. Now I'm using triple dots, which means there is a pattern, and you, if you continue the pattern, you would get all the integers. Uh, the problem is, if you continue the pattern, uh, you know, maybe you keep writing this out, obviously three, four, five, six, or the next few that come up, you can keep going, 100 million, 10 million, 10 trillion, but eventually you'll run out of time, and you won't be able to write down all the integers no matter what. Uh, so if we just write dot, dot, dot. You want to write enough stuff in the middle so that the pattern is pretty obvious. Uh, for example, in my opinion, this is probably not enough to say the pattern is obvious. Uh, the minimum, in my opinion, 
to say this pattern is obvious, I would at least include negative one. And then I would be okay saying the pattern is obvious. Um, I just put a couple extra in there just so it's super, super obvious. All right, so there's the integers. You can add as many rotations as you want. You can add one rotation, two rotations, three rotations, three million rotations if you need to. And we're going to do something really similar down here. Plus 2 pi k. Same k, could be any integer you want. Now if you look again, technically we can use just pi over 2 if we rotate half a rotation, as many half rotations as you want. Why is that? Well, half a rotation lands you right down there. So I could shortcut all of this. Okay. So I could summarize all the bad angles. So these are the bad ones, so the good ones are not these. So it's easier to talk about the bad ones. So what we're going to do in our domain, we're going to write all real numbers, except we're going to basically remove the bad ones. except ones that look like that. Now the range is a bit more tricky on tangents, so I'm not going to worry about the range for now. Um, worry about that one graph. Uh, let's go ahead, tangent, secant. I'll give a little more vertical room here. So we got secant, 1 over x. All right, this is convenient because we had to worry about dividing by x before, and we're still worried about dividing by x. And x is 0 exactly when it was 0 before. So our domain, real numbers, except same exact pi over 2 plus pi k for any integer k. All right, that's tangent and secant domain, and we'll do the range later when we do graphing. It's, it's going to be too tricky to try to write out the uh, range now. Tangent and secant, cosecant theta, 1 over y. Now we got to uh, worry about y uh, not being 0. So similar, this is defined when y not 0. All right, we'll draw another unit circle. So here, y is not zero here. Er. So we're looking for the bad ones. So one is y equal to zero, these two spots. Uh, our angle here is zero, and our angle, if we go here, is pi. Now, of course, we can keep spinning around and get two pi, keep going and get three pi. 4 pi, 5 pi, 6 pi, 7 pi, 8 pi, 9 pi. So this pattern is a bit easier to see. Let me clear out some of this extra stuff. Good. All right. So theta could be. Now if I list theta values, I could do that. 0, pi, 2 pi, 3 pi. These are bad theta values. Negative pi, negative 2 pi dot dot dot. All right, that's one way to do it. I can look at the pattern and see that it is k pi for any integer k. So you got 0 pi, 1 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, just taking different integers k. And likewise, k is negative 1. You got your negative pi, negative 2, negative 2 pi. So that's just a nicer way to write that pattern out. 
and we're gonna write out really similar real all real numbers except theta equals pi k for integers and cosecant co tangent similar x over y we have the same dividing by y problem so we got the same domain as before Okay, so there is our table. We're done with our trig functions. I don't expect you to memorize this. However, uh, you should be able to tell when uh, tangent, secant, cosecant, and cotangent, you should be able to tell what theta values make those undefined if I give you a theta value. Uh, so what I recommend you do is basically graph the angle I give you, you know, plot it out where it should be on the unit circle, and then decide if you're uh, going to be dividing by zero by looking at your unit circle. Either way, the bad points you have to be careful about are top, bottom, left, right, depending on which of the four uh, functions you're working with here. Some of them are undefined um, at some of these points and others are undefined at the other points. So next property is we're going to look at as a periodic property. So periodic functions, f of x is periodic with period p if f of x plus p equals f of x. So this says if you add p to the input, the output stays the same. So this, in English, periodic means repeats with a regular pattern. Usually it's with uh, respect to time. So something happens every year, every month, every week, you would say that's periodically occurring every year, every week, every month, etc. Let's look at a cosine. Let's think about the cosine function. <clears throat> I don't really care about the y value right now, so I'm just gonna worry about the x. So it is true that I get the same x value down here. Um, however, let's not worry about, we will worry about that very soon. Um, what I wanna think about now is what happens if I do a full rotation. So if I add two pi to my angle theta, where will I end up? I will end up exactly in the same uh, place. I will have this point right here on the unit circle. So cosine uh, has period P. Ooh. Period P equals to pi. So if you add a rotation to the angle, uh, you get the same function. And that happens for sine as well. Cosine, sine. Uh, I'm gonna wait for tangent and cotangent. Let's go for sec theta plus two pi. Let's see theta. change the heading right here. So these are all the functions, the trig functions with a two pi period. All right, so these are our two pi periodic functions. Um, one other thing I need to mention, I'll do it with the, uh, the F and X notation up here.
So we're still assuming the uh, function f is periodic. So we're going to do something a little silly. We're going to write x plus 2p as x plus p plus p. Uh, whoa, these are equal. All right, so that was a very easy algebra right there. And we're going to regroup 